Hi, welcome all to a brand new trading week as well as a brand new month and a brand new quarter ahead which is Q2. I'm Kelvin here. This week, weekly technical outlook on stock indices where I'll cover the S&P 500, the Nasdaq 100, the Hong Kong 50, the Japan 225 as well as the German, German 30 index on the key levels to watch the trend biasness. Okay, so before we start, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. Alright, so let's take a look at this performance chart. So before we start on the weekly performance, let's take a look at Q1 2021 performance, which just ended last week. So all in all, right, everything is pretty positive, except for the Hansen Tech Index. Not too bad, negative 3.6. But however, do take note that since the start of the year, it has rallied close to its current month peak high which is prior to the Chinese Lunar New Year break which is around 17 and 18 of February it read it close to 20 percent it's part of me yeah 20 close to 30 percent yeah 30 percent to the its February peak from the start of this year so then thereafter as we know that we see a lot of uh, hawkish rhetoric from the Chinese central planners where they touch on the risk of the domestic stock market being into a bubble as well as a recent clampdown on various China big tech stocks, especially on their fintech businesses. So that led to a kind of a profit taking pretty severe on the Hansen Tech Index. But however, if all in all, if you look at the Q1 2021 performance, the top performance will be the Russell 2000. 14.11%, which is the US small caps, followed by in the indexes that are heavily cyclical and value weighted, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 9.12%, followed by the German DAX, 9.34%. All right, so what's interesting in the performance, which is last week, the the week of 29th of March to 1st of April, which is Thursday, as we know that 2nd of April, Friday, all the stock market is closed for Good Friday. And in fact, for today, Hong Kong is closed as well. And it will only open on this Wednesday due to the Qingming Festival. And the European markets, the German DAX is closed as well. But however, uh, US and Singapore and the Nikkei to and Japan is remains uh, open for business from today onwards. Okay, but let's take a look at the weekly performance. Okay, so all is in the green, and I want to highlight that prior to the worst one, which is last week, was 0.87%, which is the Nasdaq 100. So as you all know that in the last three to four weeks, the US tech and growth stocks, which is a kind of a heavily weighted in Nasdaq 100 index, Rallied by 2.7%, which is the, its best performance they've seen in about three weeks ago, and managed to also surpass its prior four week average performance at 0.15%. All right, then a bit of profit taking on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, since uh, being the one that is holding off the best return in the prior four week average, slight below uh, its prior four week average and its prior, prior week performance at 0.24%. Uh, one thing positive is also the Russell 2000. So Russell 2000 in the prior week saw a heavy sell-off of negative 2.89%. And last week performance at 1.46% 4, managed to actually surpass its prior four-week average return of 0.32%. And let me share with you very interestingly the worst hit which is the Hansen Index and the Hansen Tech Index. This is due to its proximal, it proximality close to the China stock market. So as you know that the China stock market has been a kind of a uh, deflating mode as directed indirectly by the Chinese central planners since the start of this, uh, since, the, since the start of the, uh, I'll say the end of the Lunar New Year break. All right. So and plus also, you know, the negative feedback loop in this uh, China big tech stock due to the um, clampdown by the Chinese central government on their fintech uh, business arms. So what's interesting over here is that the weekly performance of Hansen Index and the Hansen Tech Index has, has now started to turn, uh, see a remarkable turnaround. 2.13% 
above negative 2.26 prior week and definitely way above its prior four week average. Similar is being seen on the tech index as well, the Hansen Tech Index, which is comprises of the China big tech stocks names like Tencent, Paidu, JD.com, Netis, Alibaba, up by a whopping 5.4%, the best return since in the last four weeks. Definitely above this prior four week average at negative 2.36%, and way, way above this its previous week performance at negative 4.93%. So as usual, the uh, Nikkei 225 is pretty much uh, outperforming as well versus its prior week performance and its prior four week average performance as well. Then there goes the German DAX 2.43% above 0.8% from its prior week performance and above its prior four week average. So all in all, what we could see now is that uh, I would like to reiterate, we are not in a kind of a potential major, major topping process yet for the major this major stock indices so as per se we talk about the global equities market this long-term bullish circular trend remains intact since the march 2009 low and what we see now is very likelihood we are in the late stages of this long-term circular bullish trend in place since march 2009 low due to this uh sector rotation into this cyclical and value stocks that has kind of a lag behind the technology and growth stocks in the last uh, five years. So there's this ongoing sector rotation in play. Until this sector rotation is being uh, played out, this is where we got to reassess the situation again to look at the current, the duration of this long-term circular trend. So nonetheless, it's not a major topping process yet. And also in the next one to three weeks, uh, technically we still have a potential bullish bias. Okay, so now let's take a look at the individual uh, technical elements of the various indices that I like to cover. Okay, so let me switch over to CMC Markets trading platform. So before we start on the S&P 500, one of the growth proxy that I highlighted since the start of um, my this uh, weekly outlook video will be one of the uh, considered as a growth proxy for for growth will be this uh, semiconductor ETF socks in short so if you look at the shocks right very clearly bullish breakout okay from this previous descending resistance from its previous all-time high at 16 of Feb and what's interesting over here is the way it shaped this rebound it hit right off this 100 day moving average which is capping previous dip previous dip since this on current major uptrend. So the thing about major uptrend is I'm talking about a trend that is close to about three to 12 months, which is since uh, last uh, March low, which is this uh, pandemic low. It's been trading in this major uptrend phase, holding above the lower boundary of the ascending channel, as well as the 100 day moving average. RSI, which is a gauge of medium term momentum, since this is a daily chart, also bounce off pretty strongly from a key corresponding support at the 43 level and 37 level and right now is actually breaking above the previous resistance which is the previous uh, swing high here as we could see yeah this level all right bouncing off breaking above it and still has room to move up before hitting this extreme overbought level. So all in all, what it means that price action remains in the uptrend and medium term upside momentum remains positive as well and yet to be overstretched in the overbought territory. So what we could do is I will actually uh, look at a uh, tighten the key medium term support to this week at 39250 looking for a further potential move to 458 and above 458 should see the next FIBO projection at 495 all right so all in all a growth proxy which is the semiconductor etf remains positive in a bullish dynamic which means ie it further supports this multi-week ongoing bullish bias that we have for the major stock indices potentially so now let's take a look at the spx so before i jump into the strategy chart for this week we look at the daily chart first the longer term element as you see, this daily chart, I want to highlight that one, two, three, higher highs, and where it touched the previous higher low, pardon me, is it actually touched and rebounded off right at the 50-day moving average, and as well as this previous 
expanding wedge former resistance turns into a pullback support all right pretty key so right now it's still trading within this ascending channel lower limit upper uh, within this ascending channel never break below the ascending channel support one time two time three time and right now it actually uh, hit our first target that or first resistance that we highlight last week at 39.90 and the next target or next resistance we have will be at 40 40. So where it actually ended last week before the Good Friday break, it printed a high of 40.22. RSI, nothing scary, hasn't hit the extreme overbought level yet. And you could see the RSI also starts to break above a corresponding resistance as well. Let me show you where is it. Taking the previous swing high. All right, a bullish breakout. So all in all, right, what we could do over for this week is I will actually tighten the key medium term pivotal support upwards to 39.40 so this is a four hour chart so if you look at the four hour chart as this situation now the four hour rsi has already come a hover in uh we call it at the overbought zone so what we could mean that since this strong rally that was has taken shape on last uh thursday it could uh represent a kind of a uh minor or one to two days of pullback towards 39.83 maximum 39.40 okay and uh, which is if i were to share with you the feeble retracement okay if i take the swing low from 25th of march or the up to here it's about 50 percent and this is 38.2 percent which is also the former swing high area of 18th of march so all in all the medium term outlook remains positive in an uptrend we talk about medium term if we talk about one to three weeks so it's except that in the minor uh, minor term we talk about potential one to two days we may see a pullback first given this uh, steep up move on last friday and also the four hour rsi is at the overbought region we're telling us that upside momentum is kind of a little overstretched but there's no bearish divergence okay so tighten the key medium term pivotal support to 3940 that's my key support level to watch to maintain this ongoing bullish biasness that I have for the SPX 500 potentially thereafter should it should actually see another potential up leg to test the next resistance at 4080 slash 4100 because 4040 is almost coming pretty soon so 4080 slash 4100 will be the next resistance to watch a break above 4100 should take us up towards 4120 which is close to the upper boundary of this short term ascending channel in place since 5th of March 2021 low and as well as the one time FIBO Nachi expansion target taken from here projected from here all right now moving on to the tech uh, heavy or tech, technology heavy Nasdaq 100 Okay, let's go to the next 100 so if you could recall that next 100 last week we have a neutrality uh, uh we, we actually have a neutrality stance where we watch the upper limit of the neutrality zone at 13,340. but we highlight that uh, potentially is trading in the inverse head and shoulder bullish reversal configuration which indeed on last friday or pardon me yeah on last thursday you actually have a daily close above the three 13,340 level so it closed at 13,000 uh yeah right exactly close to 13,340 it has a break above it okay pardon me well, let me share with you again okay over from here it actually went all the way up to 13,000 of 400 okay which is close above the 13,340 uh, level okay on a uh, friday asia session which is the futures yeah so uh all in all what, what what's positive over here is so reintegrate back above the 50 day moving average previously was resistance acted as a resistance since um yeah since 17th of march so about two weeks resistance and it has a, a clear breakout since uh, last uh, thursday so with that right and before i go to the forward is that the rsi also pretty positive bouncing out from a significant support at the 37 level and now surpassing the res the, the prior resistance at the 50 level and also hasn't reached uh, this overbought zone yet so all in all uh, upside momentum at least in the medium term seems positive for now so with that right we could actually validate a kind of a, a bullish uh, potential bullish up move on the Nasdaq 100 this is the four hour chart so what we could see over here is a similar scenario like the RSI uh, on the S&P 500 
is the 4 hour RSI is actually coming close to the extreme overbought level at 80. So, this is where we may see the risk of a minor pullback first. We talk about a 1 to 3 days, 1 to 2 days of pullback to retest the inverse head and shoulder former neckline resistance now turns into a pullback support at 13,170 level. So, medium term pivotal support at this uh, 12,750 slash. Uh, 12,620. So as long as this level holds, uh, we still uh, potentially see a move up to to test 17,710, then followed by this uh, recent all-time high at 13,906. Okay. This is an arrow over here. Let me change it. Uh. Okay, 13,906. Then uh, slash uh, 14,030. So 14,030 is actually a Fibonacci expansion level and as well as close to the upper boundary of this short term ascending channel that is in place uh, since the low of 6th of March. All right. Now moving on to the Hong Kong 50. So as you know, Hong Kong 50 is closed today. So uh, last week, Hong Kong 50, we have a neutrality stance as well because of the bearish breakdown of this inverse head and shoulder formation. And the upper limit or the upper boundary of the neutrality range is at 28,700. So on last Thursday, it actually closed at 28,964, which kind of a reintegrate back above this head and shoulder we call it the neckline support and to this resistance and reintegrate back into this resistance level so what we could see over here is that this bearish head and shoulder because previously this is the resistance this support once the support breaks uh, it should become a resistance and the price should actually goes down lower but however uh, price actually managed to reintegrate back above this dotted uh, neckline uh, support level. So all in all, right, what it means that the bearish biasness or the bearish uh, pressure that is being inflicted by this uh, head and shoulder formation has been negated. So with that, right, we actually turn bullish at least up towards this zone over here, which is 29,575 slash 30,140, which is a kind of a congestion zone previously which was this zone followed by this zone and as well if I have to draw the FIBO uh, the FIBO retracement for your you actually stop at a 50% uh. okay stop close to the 61.8% FIBO retracement of the previous uh, down move from 18 of Feb towards this towards the low of 25th of March. So what we could do over here is that uh, RSI is coming close to the overbought level. So what we could see a bit of pullback or so, uh, one to two days perhaps when the market opens on Wednesday to 28,560. 28,000 will be the key medium term pivotal support uh, before we see a potential push up to take shape into this conjunction zone, resistance zone of 29,575 slash 30,140 level. Now moving on to the next Asia in this index that I'd like to share with you will be the Nikkei 225 or the Japan 225 we call it in our platform. So for Nikkei 225, uh, very interestingly that like last week we highlighted that it's still kind of a trading within a kind of symmetrical triangle range configuration where we have a neutrality stance between the two limits of its symmetrical triangle. This is what I am trying to share with you all. Okay, since this, uh, I would say close to 20 years high or a 30 years high at 15 of Feb, which is at 30,284 30, level, it's been trading a kind of a sideway symmetrical triangle configuration. So close to about a month already or four weeks, I would say. So interestingly, right, today uh, the Nikkei 225 actually tested the upper limit of this uh, symmetrical triangle configuration at 30,230. So uh, still no change. Um, RSI is at the extreme overbought level as well on the four hour. So I'm still expecting a bit of uh, churning that's still going ongoing. So based on the Elliott wave, right, we are still in a kind of an A, B, C, D, and maybe a last potential leg of E wave to actually complete this uh, symmetrical triangle configuration before uh, a bullish breakout takes place. Yeah, so uh, still neutral for this week between 30,230 and 28,300 uh, on the Nikkei 225 or the Japan 225 for now because uh, from the Elliott wave perspective, potentially we may see another E wave 
to e, e wave which is the down leg to actually uh, potential complete the last wave of this uh, symmetrical triangle configuration that is in place in 16 of Feb 2021 high Okay, now moving on to the uh, uh, top performer, which is the German 30 index or the German DAX, where it's heavily weighted uh, uh, to cyclicals and value related stocks. Strong push up, okay, uh, close at uh, 15,186, printed high of 15,198. So if you recall, last week we have an upside target or resistance at 15,150. Congratulations, we have really made. Um, Kind of meet this resistance level so where do we go from here uh from what i see is that if you look at the, this the daily chart all right daily chart no signs of a kind of a exhaustion yet uh rsi yes had hit the extreme overbought level perhaps a bit of sideway configuration no bearish divergence on the daily rsi the next uh, short-term intermediate resistance to watch will be at this level, close about this 14,600 level. Then thereafter followed by 14,130, which is this former range top from 8th of Jan to 8th of February, and as well as the 50-day moving average. This is the daily chart. So what we have for this week in terms of this strategy is I will actually tighten the key medium-term pivotal support to 14,000. 14,680. So what's 14,680 is actually the lower boundary of this short-term ascending channel. This channel start to break out more steeper uh, as seen on last week, which is 31st of March uh, from linking the lows of 26 of Feb 2021. RSI at the extreme overbought level. So potentially we may see a pullback down towards this swing high, swing, this former minor swing low area at 14,930 then thereafter uh, before targeting the next potential resistance zone at 15,400 slash 15,530 so what is this resistance zone is the upper limit of this steeper short term ascending channel as well as a confluence of a uh, FIBO uh, expansion level as well 0 0.76.4 and as well as taken from here the low of 1st of Feb which is two times of this 1st uh, uh, of Feb up move projected to 6th of February and projected down to the 26th of February 2021 low coming at two times which is at 15,530 level so uh, potentially as long as this 14,680 level holds which is so the 38% retracement of this uh, last uh, up move I would say the, the last steep up move from 26th of Feb to last Thursday high is coming very close to the 38.2% all right so with that all in all uh, I would say that in aggregate the major indices are still evolving in the potential medium term bullish configuration except that uh, for the Japan 225 we still expect one more leg of uh, potentially to complete the e-wave of that symmetrical triangle before uh, staging that potential uh, bullish up move. So uh, with that, uh, we prefer to stay neutral for now on the uh, Nikkei 225 and the Japan uh, or, or the Japan 225 for now, right? So the rest will actually be bullish. Uh, so where I will actually tighter the key medium term pivotal support on the uh, German 30 uh, index as well as the SPX uh, 500 index, and I validate. A potential bullish scenario on the Nasdaq 100 and as and the Hong Kong 50 index. So with that, have a great trading week ahead and have a great start for a brand new month and a brand new quarter. And I see you all next in my next video.